Hi folks, we're going to talk today a little bit about a few more of Marx's very important contributions to the field of conflict theory. These three ideas of alienation, false consciousness, and class consciousness. Now, it's probably no surprise to you that Marx considered modern society, modern Western society, capitalism, industrialism, urbanization, all to be conflict-laden. That is to say, he considered these aspects of modern society to be problematic for most people. He saw society in terms of two classes, and he also saw society in terms of class being the most important attribute or aspect to determine your place in the overall structure of society. And so he came up with these ideas of alienation, false consciousness, and class consciousness to try to help people understand that they might not necessarily have an accurate understanding of where they actually fit with regard to the other class, the capitalist class, the people who own the means of production. Uh, Marx referred to these people as the bourgeoisie. And so he was speaking here to the workers of society and he talked about this idea of alienation with regard to the ideology of a particular society and in particular the ideology of capitalism. He said that the ideology of capitalism helps those who already have power to maintain their power. And we can think of that in terms of contemporary American society. Marx said that oftentimes people believe things about society that simply aren't necessarily valid, that wouldn't be upheld by research should we choose to investigate them. And oftentimes these things we believe cause us to have misperceptions about society. So in the U.S., what happens is this ideology that we have, for example, the strong survive, you get what you deserve as long as you work hard, you'll succeed, these sorts of ideas. This ideology that we have helped those in power to keep and maintain their power over less fortunate individuals and groups. So the nature of a class society, which is what we are today, fosters the concept of alienation. So when Marx starts talking about alienation, he's really talking from a philosophical standpoint. And he talks about how this contemporary type of society separates us from living the way that we would normally want to live or choose to live. It separates us from what he calls our human nature, the essence of who we are. And he says that this is a consequence of living in a society that has social classes. And so while we think this is a result of a socially stratified society, he says that you become alienated from all of humanity just by the very structure in which you live. Now again, it serves us well to understand what society was like when Marx was alive. Most people were working in factories uh, at very monotonous jobs very routine. They were working extraordinary hours, sometimes seven days a week with no scheduled breaks, probably making some very little part of something and never really seeing the end product. Contemporarily, we can think about this like a worker in an auto plant. They might put one part of that car together, never really seeing the end result, never seeing the car roll off the production line. And so he said that this type of constant, monotonous factory work alienates us from the very essence of who we are. This alienation fosters divisions of labor in society and encourages relationships based on wealth or lack thereof. What ends up happening to us when we have this type of alienation is that we start to feel separated from the meaning of life, the meaning of our own lives. We start to feel like it's just time to make the donuts, day in, day out, going to work, coming home, and feeling like that's really all there is to existence. Marx felt that this concept of alienation was an extremely important concept for people to understand. 
So along with alienation come two more of Marx's concepts, the concepts of false consciousness and class consciousness. Now, in a modern society, Marx asserted that in an industrialized society, in an urban setting, we live in a state of what he called false consciousness. And this was really not truly understanding where you fit into the structure. And according to Marx, if you don't understand where you truly fit, you're more likely to allow the status quo to exist, even when it's not in your best interest. What he asserted was, if we live in a state of false consciousness, we allow an unjust society to exist. And so he said, this is a very dangerous place for us to be in. It's possible in contemporary American society that we have large numbers of people who live in this area of false consciousness, and that further encourages alienation to exist. You know, in a society, perhaps many of us who have jobs and have a roof over our head and can put food on the table every night think that we're in a much better place in the strata of society than we actually are. And frankly, research would suggest that what I just said is actually true. When asked, most people estimate that where they are relative to others is better than where they actually are relative to others within the structure of society. So Marx said that we needed to get out from under the veil of false consciousness. He said we needed to lift the mask away from our faces and to really be able to understand where we actually fit. And that would be, in Marx's words, developing what he called a class consciousness. For Marx, class consciousness forces us to wake up. It would force us to understand where we actually fit, why we fit there, and exactly what the implications of that is. He would also assert that if most of us developed a true class consciousness, that we would want to advocate for change in the structure of society. And this is where, for a conflict theorist, social movements happen. This is when, finally, people start to snap out of it and they start to band together and they start to realize that as groups, they can impact the structure. They can make social change happen. The women's movement, the civil rights movement, contemporarily, the LGBT movement, Black Lives Matter, Occupy Wall Street, and the Me Too movement, all of these are prime examples of class consciousness happening. All right. I hope this helps. Take care. We'll talk again soon. Bye-bye.